Well, glory be to God. Welcome, welcome. This is Dr. Regina Patrick of Life Changes Ministries. I am a transformation thinking coach, pastor, minister of mentor, minister and mentor. Amen. And I help people change their minds, believe better so that they can live better. I'm so excited to be with you tonight. I'm talking tonight about the mind of Christ, having the mind of Christ. Amen. We've already prayed and gone before the throne of God. Just want you to tune in here and listen. Share this with a neighbor, a friend, somebody that you know that really needs some peace, some power. Amen. And some the ability to think better so that they can live better, make better choices. And I'm super excited about this word and giving and sharing it with you, my friends. All right, let's get started. Over in Matthew, uh, our scripture comes tonight, our primary scripture, and I don't have a lot, but I have several, out of Matthew 22, out of Matthew 22, uh, verses 37 to 39, Matthew 22, verses 37 to 39, and it reads, um, well, if I start at 36, it says, Master, the question came, it says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And here's the answer. Verse 37, Jesus said to him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Come on, check, check. And this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I'm going to read that again. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and with all thy mind. And this is the first commandment and the great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, some of these uh, different Bibles have a little bit of a different reading. It says you should love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all of thy soul, and all of thy strength, okay? This is a little bit different, but it says that is the first commandment. It's the greatest one, to love God. It says, but the second one is pretty similar to that. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. So I'm talking from tonight about having the mind of Christ. This really stuck out in my spirit as I was preparing tonight to share this. How do you love your neighbor as yourself? It's something very pertinent because it says in verse 40 that on these two commandments, just these two, hang all of the law and all of the prophets. It says on these two, on these two, you know, hang all of the law and all of the prophets. So he says, here's the great one and here's the second greatest one. Love God with everything in you, okay? And then go love your neighbor as you love yourself. Praise God. How can you? love your neighbor if you don't really know how to love yourself? That becomes the question because you can't do this thing unto them that you've not even done to yourself. So my question tonight is, how how much do you love you? Do you really love you? Do you know, have you been taught how to love yourself? Glory to God. Amen. Do you really know how to love yourself? So Again, we're talking about having the mind of Christ. I came across an incredible, some of you might know of this story. Uh, his name is Pastor Chris. They call him Chris B, Pastor Chris B. And he's a very influential man of God. He's an incredible teacher. And I've come to really enjoy his, his, his teachings and his sermons. And he comes with a very practical word, but it's always profound and can really help you think on a different level. And so Pastor Chris V told this, this is a true story. It's a true account. And um, this happened in his life, but he was invited and had opportunity to come pastor a church. And uh, so he and his wife prayed and they felt led that they were supposed to go pastor this church. And they decided, well, when we come to this new church, this new community, we don't want to come in as 
people thinking we are hirelings. So they asked the board at the church that they were going to come pastor. They said, for one year, we don't want a salary. We just want to come in. We want to serve. We want to get to know God's people. We want God's people to get to know us. So they all agreed. Okay, okay, that that's good. If that's the way you want to go. He said, absolutely no salary. And the reason he said that was, number one, he and his wife had a very prominent business, decided before they took this uh, assignment to become the pastors of this new church, that they were going to sell the business so that they could give all of their due diligence and all of their time to this new ministry. So they sold their business and it sold for about $2 million. And um, they were very excited and they thought, well, we'll make an adjustment and therefore we won't need any. You know, we got this in order. They got this financially in order. They got everything financially in order. And so they off, they go and they accept the assignment. Six weeks into their new pastoring of this new work, they find out that the, that the company that bought their company went belly up. They went and filed bankruptcy. They got into a legal position where they were unable to pay and were not legally responsible or bound to pay. It was part of their bankruptcy charge. And uh, so this, this pastor and his lovely wife looked up and they had no money coming. And they've already told this church, don't bother to pay us for a year. And they cannot now go and renege on that. Well, make matters worse. 90 days later, they did get a letter from the IRS in regards to the transaction previously and found out they owed the IRS $1 million. Ladies and gentlemen, if you do the math, that is $3 million. They are in a deficit. They were devastated. They were in a hole. They went from thinking that they were financially solid. They were on solid ground. They had put their portfolio together. They were ready to go serve the Lord and they find out that their whole world is turned upside down. They lose the house. They lose their possessions. They lose everything that they had monetarily, uh, except for two old cars that were paid for that the government didn't want. <laughs> and the, literally the clothes on their back. So, of course, they go to the church and tell the church that they are very sorry, you know, that they had no foresight that this thing would happen to them. They were in, they were literally uh, destitute. They didn't know which way was up. They had not planned for it. There was no secondary incomes or monies or resources by which to go and pull from. So all of their comfort and their nest egg and everything was gone, gone, and gone. So they told the, the, the church that they would have to leave their assignment, they would have to be released from any obligation to the church because they had to go now and fend for themselves, go back to work, back to uh, uh, business, you know, and back to grinding so that they could put food on the table and reestablish themselves. So the ministry came and gathered around this couple and they told Pastor Chris and his wife, they said, listen, these Pastor Chris said, look, all I know to do is go get a lawyer, file bankruptcy, try to save anything that I do have left, which was just literally nothing of value. Or if it had been, the IRS would have taken it already. But they didn't even, you know, they were scared. They didn't know if this thing would call uh, for jail time because they just didn't have no more money. There was nothing else to do and uh, to resolve the issue. So they said, well, we're going to leave. We're going to go back to work. We are sorry this happened. We didn't know it was going to happen. And the, the board said, listen, don't file bankruptcy. Let's seek God and pray with you guys for six months. Don't make any financial uh, uh, adjustments. Let's just seek the face of God for six months. And he told them, he said, I'm going to be honest. I don't have six months of faith in me. It is nothing that I can, in me that I can do for the next six months. My faith ain't there. And so the uh, board member, his name was Bill, Brother Bill. Brother Bill say, well, I want you to have confidence in my faith. You trust 
the God in me. Glory to God. And so he said, okay. He said, him and his wife agreed, you know, they would have the minimum of the minimum of care because they said they would not renege. They did not want to take no salary. You know, all things that they knew had fallen apart, but they decided to trust not in their own faith, but in the faith of these people. Um, and so Brother Bill said, okay, so we, we're going to pray. Well, four weeks later, a month later, after they asked him to hold out for six months, 30 days later, they get a letter that the IRS had forgiven. Uh, by the way, Brother Bill had someone in his family that was a tax attorney, and he went to helping, you know, the pastor, Pastor Chris, and uh, advising Pastor Chris, and he was making letters and phone calls and uh, negotiating with the IRS on Pastor Chris's behalf. And lo and behold, one month later, the IRS had relinquished, listen, um, I, they relinquished that thing from being $1 million. They forgave $900,000. Come on, y'all. In a month, $900,000 was gone off of that $3 million. Okay. It was gone. So now all they owe IRS is $100,000. Now they can breathe a little bit because they figure we can, you know, we can, we can see that. But a million was out of the question. And then they, Got to with the um, other company, and things begin to kind of start turning in their favor, start looking a little bit more favorable, and God was intervening. And so one afternoon, Brother Bill, the young man on the board, came to Pastor Chris, and he had an envelope in his hand, and he hands it to him. And Pastor Chris opens the envelope. Y'all listen to this. Pastor Chris opens the envelope, and he sees it. And he said, oh, my God. And it's, look, and he says, $3,000. It's a check in here for $3,000. He jumps up now. He grabs the pastor, the pastor, Pastor Chris, goes and grabs Brother Bill around the neck, and he hugs him, and he gives him a high five, and he just, woo, like, whoa, thank you so much. I appreciate this. Man, $3,000, this is going to help me out so much. You know, this is going to really bring some relief. And so Bill starts laughing. Brother Bill said, Pastor Chris, look at that check again. And y'all, Pastor Chris looks again, and the check is not $3,000. The check is $30,000. And Pastor Chris can't believe his eyeballs. And he slumps back in his chair, and he said, man of God, what, what is this? And Brother Bill says, you know, my wife and I, we were praying and we believed God for some things and some things happened for us. And we just wanted to sow that into your life. And so Pastor Chris, he doesn't get back up and he says, thank you as graciously as he know how. But Pastor Chris is not tripping. His mind is going a hundred miles an hour. And he says, thank you so much. Brother Bill, you are so kind. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. But from that day on, listen, Pastor Chris said when Brother Bill would come and he say he would call and say, listen, we're going out to a golf outing and we want you to go with us. And he said he would respectfully decline. And Brother Bill, who was a sweet man and a kind man and a generous man, would say, you know, listen, uh, we want you guys to come back for dinner. He would always respectfully decline. And Pastor Chris said he started avoiding Brother Bill at every cost. Say if he would see Brother Bill going in the lobby, he would go out of the back door of the church. If he would see, said he would tell his wife, as soon as church is over, we got to go. It's just like, what are you, you running out of church like the building on fire? What's wrong with you? He said, just, you know, just. Hey, just follow my lead. Come on, just follow my lead. So he would snatch his wife after church, run out of the church, and he would never, he would found himself avoiding Brother Bill intentionally. So after this went on for a couple of weeks, he said he would get, and, and he could feel himself getting anxious and anxiety was setting in whenever he would see Brother Bill coming in his direction. So he decided to pray about it. He said, God, this is a kind man. He is a generous man. 
He is a loving man. And this brother gave me $30,000. And he said, God, what's wrong? What am I doing? Why am I, why am I avoiding Bill? Why am I going out of my way? When he come to the right, I go to the left. If he come to the left, I go to the right. And he said, the Holy Spirit said, Chris, do you really want to know? And he said, yeah, God, what's, 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 up, what's up with me? Glory to God. Listen to this, y'all. He said, you were excited when you got the $3,000. When you looked at the check and you thought it was $3,000, you felt very worthy and you, you felt loving and you felt very appreciative to Bill's generosity when you thought it was $3,000. But when you thought it was, when you realized it was 30000 all of a sudden, your attitude toward Bill changed. Glory to God. Listen to this. Because you felt unworthy. You felt like you was worthy of $3,000 of generosity for somebody, but you didn't feel worthy of $30,000. Amen. You you could accept a $3,000 gift of, of from somebody as a loving gift. But a $30,000 gift, glory to God, you thought nobody could really love you that much. Listen to this. And so the Holy Spirit tells Pastor Chris, he says, you're blocking your blessings. Hallelujah. You you will build a case against anybody who loves you. Y'all listen to this. Anybody who treats you better than you treat yourself, you reject it. My God. Anybody, hallelujah. Listen, that is better than you, than you are to yourself, you reject it. He said, anybody who loves on you more than you know how to love yourself, you reject them. And he said, you you you, you get to a place where you are literally suspicious of their intention. Oh, y'all better hear me tonight. Do you hear what the Holy Spirit is saying? Everybody take note of this. You will never, ever, never let someone love you more than you know how to love yourself. Somebody should say amen right there. Amen. You you can never receive somebody loving you more than you love yourself. And so when God sends somebody to love on you and be good to you and be gracious unto you, your, your paradigm will go into suspicion. And you will be suspicious of their intentions. You will be suspicious uh, suspicious of their love. Amen. You will go into a fear of their motive. Hallelujah. And your fear will tell you, oh, they just being fake. Because if somebody, somebody, listen, listen to me really, 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 really good. Amen. Um, we all have heard this. And most of us grew up hearing this. If it seems too good to be true, it's probably not. Tell me if anybody's ever heard that. Say amen. Have anybody heard that? If it seems to, you, uh, come on. If it seems too good to be true, it's probably not true. But I got something to tell you tonight. We have to come. We have to come back to the drawing board with the mind of Christ. And the Holy Spirit is trying to get us to understand if it seems too good to be true, that's because it's God. And so we, when people love on us and, and, and we got to stop being suspicious of their love. And so God told Pastor Chris, he said, you need to love yourself through my eyes. You need to see how much I love you and accept loving yourself on that same level. Y'all need to listen tonight. Glory to God. See, what will happen is that you will accept a $3,000 worth of love. You expect a little love, but if somebody loves you more than you're, you're capable of understanding because you've not seen it or experienced it, you, you, you won't accept an abundant love. Now, didn't God tell us I came to give you life and give you life? How much? How much life did God come to give you? Life more abundantly, abundantly. So y'all, we get, we, we accept $3,000 love. We accept some gifts. We accept some goodness in life. But y'all, if you start up rejecting big love, big abundance, big goodness, big promotions, and you start looking at them through suspicious eyes, like what they really want. Uh, uh, what you know that ain't a, they, what do they want? So 
Pastor Chris was thinking, he trying to buy me. I, I ain't going to let him play me like that. He Nobody gives you. Listen to this. He said, he actually said, nobody gives you something for nothing. Oh, my God. And he said his suspicious paradigm and his that, that paradigm that says, so he trying to play me. He's trying to buy me. He, he must want something for me. Ain't no grown man going to get no man. He don't know, been knowing 30 days, $30,000. I ain't do nothing for it. So Pastor Chris had this mentality. You got to earn everything you get. Hallelujah. But y'all, we have a, a God that God gives grandiose gifts. Huh? Child, not based on because you could throw far and run fast. Glory to God. In other words, God's miracle signs, wonders, and blessings don't come because we earned them. My God, it don't come on the heels of, amen, you got to work and do something Oh, God won't do something for you. God is a gracious God. He's the God that came to give us life and give us Zoe. Zoe. And so, y'all, we got to get rid of this little bit. I'll accept a little bit of goodness, but I don't know about a, an abundance of goodness. I can accept a little bit of prosperity, but I don't know about, you know, just something, a whole lot of money. I don't know if I can handle millions. You got to understand you have the mind of Christ. We got to get out of this suspicious paradigm. We got to get out this limited paradigm that God is the God that says, stop blocking your blessings. If somebody say, I won't block my blessings, glory to God, glory to God. Don't block your own blessings. God can send you the love of your life and your suspicious paradigm will push them away. My God of Zion. Oh, I'm teaching tonight. We will push friends away. We will push spouses away. We will push abundance away. Oh, and we start making the case against abundance, making the case against wealth, making the case against people that just came to love us. And because we haven't learned to love ourselves on the level that God has is teaching us to. Hallelujah. We have to come up and we got to think higher. We got to have this abundant mentality. Our mindset has got to come all the way up to the penthouse. So at least we be suspicious. At least we be so fearful that we think everything is fraudulent. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Let me get a drink. We think everything is a fake. We don't see anything as, as God could be in it. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say amen. <clears throat> We got to understand that God is the God of the breakthrough. God is the God of abundance. God is the God that is opulent. Hallelujah. God is the God that is El Shaddai. He's more than enough. When the woman that touched the hem of his garment said, if I touch him, she knew that she was going to get her breakthrough. She knew it. And God made her every way whole. He brought her, when the 10 lepers got healed, all of them went their way but one. One turned back, and when he came back and worshiped, when he came back and said, thank you. You know what Jesus says, the other nine, where are they? And he says, they gone. <laughs> he said, but you will be made whole. Glory to God. Why? Hallelujah. So we got to come into this abundance mindset. We got to come into this mind of God. We got to have this mind of the anointed glory to God so that when God does the big things and he always does the big things, when the blessings come, we won't talk ourselves out of it. We won't block the blessings. We won't rebuke the love. We won't be suspicious, amen, of the sudden miracle. Hallelujah. We won't be afraid that it's, it's, it's something that's fake and fraudulent. But we, you know what? When we get a word from God, when we get a prophetic word from God, when we get an abundant life from God, when we get the blessings of God, do you know it's our responsibility to either receive or reject? When you get a word that God going to do something, you go, oh, yeah, I received that. But when it comes, don't reject it. Oh, God, I thank you. 
Listen, that's like if you order something on Amazon, but then they show up at the door and you reject it. <laughs> when you pray in these prayers to the God of heaven, the God of the, the God of the universe, the God who is your father and my father, when we're asking for love and we're asking for wealth and we're asking for divine uh, insight and wisdom and we're asking for help and we're asking for healing, when it shows up, listen, receive it. Receive it. Somebody shout, I got to receive it. Hallelujah. See, it's yours. And you want these things. You want happiness. You want help. You want healing. You want wealth. You want prosperity. You want abundance. You want peace. Hallelujah. You want it. But then when it comes, don't be the person that goes, that's too much. That's too much. Oh God, I can receive the 3,000, but 30,000, but 300,000, but three, oh God, you, you just so oh, outlandish. It's too much. And God sends you somebody who cares about your soul. Recognizing this go, I receive, I believe that I receive that. Why? Because you serve the God who sent his son to die and give you abundant life. So when abundance comes, stop rejecting it. Stop being suspect about it. Learn that you can love on yourself. You love on yourself. You love on yourself. Hallelujah. You work on yourself. That's what self-development is about. That is exactly what self-development. You grow in grace. You keep growing. You never, ever hit a, a I'm arrived stage. The moment you hit one level, God said, bam, let's keep rising. Let's keep going. Let's keep growing. So the Bible calls it going from glory to glory to glory. We go from faith to faith, listen, and glory to glory. That's the abundant life. It does not. You got not just receive the $3,000 and go, yeah, I'm down. I'm cool. No, when God got much, much more. Over in Psalms, he says, and I will increase you and your children. I will increase you and your children with more and more. Come on. And more. The abundant life is not, there's no cap. The abundant life is there's no limit. Stop living on this low limit lifestyle. Get your mind congruent that it's nothing that God can and won't do for me. Absolutely nothing. You got to think higher. You got to work on yourself. You got to meditate on this stuff because that's how you switch the paradigm is through repetition, repetition every day. Just going, I am abundantly blessed, abundantly loved. I'm safe and secure. I'm solid. Hallelujah. I have all things and all sufficiency from my abundant God. And then when it shows up, Receive it. I receive that. I can receive that. When they, when they try to offer you the job, don't be scared. When the promotions show up, don't do, don't shrink back. Listen, hallelujah. Y'all remember the story I've told so many times. For those that are listening, perhaps for the first time, uh, I've successfully lost over 150 pounds and I've kept it off for over seven years and got off all medications and totally, uh, totally transformed my health and life through just listening to God, just listening to God. Amen. A doctor do not get credit for this baby because it wasn't medical. It wasn't medicine at all. And I'm down for taking medicine when you need it. But God gave me after a 21 day fast, he showed me what to do and what to say. And it manifested in my life. And so when I was in this process of losing the weight and I was starting to come down one morning, the Holy Spirit asked me, how much do you weigh? And I had just got off the scale. I said, Lord, I weigh 278 pounds. I had just seen it, y'all. I just looked at it. He said, how much you weigh? Well, I knew I weighed in the natural the scale said 278, but the fact that God asked me a second time, I knew that my first answer was incorrect. So when God says, Gina, how much do you weigh? I did not dare say 278. 
You know why? Because I knew I was not in the, I didn't have the mind of God. So my mind, Regina's mind was going, uh, the scale said 278. <laughs> but God didn't care about the scale. Why? Because he, he wanted me to see that I have his mind. I have his mind. So I didn't dare say that again. I wasn't finna insult the Holy Spirit with the re what, what most people call reality. Because the highest form real of reality is the truth. See, God knows the beginning. He knows the ending before the beginning begins. And so when God asked me the second time how much I weigh, I wasn't finna give him that dumb answer. Hallelujah. That's the answer my eyes saw. But God wanted me to say what my spirit saw. And so I sat down and I said, okay, I'm not going to repeat that. So what do I tell God? Because I got to tell him something. And it occurred to me, the revelation came to me all over my vision board. It says 150. And it was like, voila, the lights went on on the inside. And I went, God, I'm 150 pounds. He said, how much? I said, 150 pounds. He said, how much? Y'all, I knew I was on it. Why? Because in that moment, I was I had the mind of Christ. Well, I've come to learn through study that we can live with the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. We can live in this trajectory of the mind of Christ where we're coming up with the right thoughts. We're thinking the right thoughts and we're saying the right words. Come on. We have the mind of Christ. Somebody say, I have the mind of Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I have the mind of Christ. When I first got called to ministry and God called me to ministry and he told me he called me to the nations, I had a talk with God that lasted three months and I tried to chase him away. I tried to convince God. I said, you are making a grievous mistake. I'm not your girl. <laughs> I am not the one. You couldn't be serious. Why in the world would you even uh, think I could handle this? I am mean. I, I got a really short temper. I don't even like people. People work my nerves and I got a pouty mouth. I cuss like a sailor. And I, I probably would be one of them Christians that will embarrass you because I'm going to cuss everybody out. <laughs> and, and you know what? I tried to chase God away. I tried to chase God away. Why? Because I didn't see myself like he sees me. Because I, you don't know who you really are until you look at yourself through his eyes. You don't know who you are. You're looking at your failure and your parents and your upbringing and your faults and your sins and your limitations and your insecurities. See, you're looking at you through your eyes, but God don't care about that. I didn't scare God away. I didn't chase God away. But listen, that's what you do when you are looking through your own eyes your own eyelids through the natural perspective but God knew who he created me to be and he was just the Bible says that we will be changed into the image and the likeness of almighty God he knew what he made you to be listen God is not scared about your faults, failures, your sins, your addictions, that don't freak God out he's called you and he's appointed you and he's anointed you and you gotta stop giving God chase trying to chase him away and your own limitation and belief system and let your new paradigm take place and just say, God, you created me in your image and your likeness. So I'm therefore like you. I can do what you call me to do. I can say what you speak in my heart to say. I can go wherever you anoint me to go. I am your girl. I'm the one. Send me. Glory to God. Somebody needs to say amen right there. Hallelujah. You will, listen, you will come to love you. Then you can love others. Then you can accept their love for you. Know that you are loved by God and you are amazing and incredible. You are altogether lovely. You are it. You are it, baby. You are the it factor. You are the one. You are made in the image and the likeness of God. There are no flies on you. Quit trying to see, come up short with all the things that you think you're not and accept the mind of God. Oh, yes, I do love me. Develop it. Work on this. Get in the word. Do what he says to do. He says at night and day, meditate on this thing. So why? So you can become who you were created to become. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How could God love me? I, I thought, how in the world can you use me? 
Listen, I, I was like, okay, I want to be saved. You know what I was doing? That $3,000 worth. I want to be saved. I wanted to, I was expecting a little bit of the blessings of God. But God was like, no, nah, that's not how it's worth. You get my abundance. You can have the abundance. I wanted to be saved. But all this other stuff, I was like, oh, I'm not worthy of all of that. Yes, I am. And yes, you are. You are worthy. Hallelujah. I am qualified. Who God calls he qualified. Listen, I'm qualified to teach people. Amen. You're qualified to do what the Holy Spirit sent you here to do. Somebody say, I'm qualified. Glory to God. I'm qualified to do it. Amen. So your self-care is real. Mm. Get up and take care of yourself. Get up and take care of yourself. Mm. Take good care of you. Self-care and self-development is real. Spiritual care and spiritual development is real because the real you is there. The real you is there. Glory to God. Michelangelo took this piece of just a clump, just a clump and sculpted out the most beautiful, creative thing. And it was inside of there all the time. Hallelujah. Stop telling and repeating to yourself your flaws, your mistakes. Well, if only I should have. Stop. Don't ever say what an insult to God. If only I should ever. Stop that. Glory to God. Understand that I have the mind of Christ and start saying today, hallelujah, I make wise choices. Yeah, 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 yeah. I make wise choices. I have the mind of Christ. I have a bullshit. I come up with solutions and answers that are creative and innovative and God will be honored and they will bless many people. I'm smart. I'm more than enough. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm an overcomer. I can do all things through Christ. You have the mind of Christ. Accept abundance. Accept prosperity. Accept the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Somebody should shout amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, when Jesus was being crucified, they took him to this place called Golgotha. And everybody, if you look on a map, if you look at that region, it looks like a human head or a human skull, Golgotha. And listen, remember when they put that thorn, a crown on his head and it pierced in his head? Y'all, that's so our head so that the curse could be reversed, so that your head could be gloriously filled with right thinking. Gloriously filled with blessed, blessed thoughts. Hallelujah. So you can have his mind. Hallelujah. He shed his blood. Amen. And suffered so you and I don't have to suffer. And so we could call things that be not as though they were. We could use this abundant life. Use this blessed expression. Hallelujah. And our mindset. Y'all, our mind is amazing now. It's anointed. Hallelujah to Jesus. What a great thing to have the mind of Christ. Everybody just take a second. Put your hands on your head and say, I have been blessed with the mind of Christ. Come on, say it out loud. I have been blessed with the mind of Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we have that Zoe, the mind of God. We have that Zoe, the life of God, this abundant life. Amen. So the mind of Christ, listen, stop arguing against your abundance. Stop arguing against your prosperity. Stop trying to disqualify yourself that you don't, you got to earn it. You didn't earn it. You didn't work for it. Hey, Shonda, remember when the prodigal son came home and the father ran and said, put, look him up, put a, ro it is, put a robe on him, put a ring on him, put shoes on him. Let's throw the party. Let the party begin. Hallelujah. And he celebrated him. See, it's one thing to be tolerated. It's another thing to be celebrated. Hallelujah. God is not just tolerating you. He's celebrating you. 
He's celebrating your life. He don't want you to have a life where you're just tolerating being here. This is supposed to be a celebration that you are here. Oh, come on. Come on. Y'all had to come. I can feel people coming up in faith. I can feel the faith rising. Hallelujah. We're not here to be tolerated and, and just, you know, it's a new day. Y'all, this is a new month. A new month. That's supposed to be hype. You should be super excited. A new month. I get to do a new thing. Glory to God. And so we have this mind of Christ, this abundant life, this Zoe. And you know what you got to do? You got to receive it. You know what the Bible says? Mark 11, 22. I believe I receive. I believe that I receive. It says that when you pray, believe that you receive and you will have what you say. You got to believe and receive. Believe and receive it. Hallelujah. I have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. So when we hear things and it sounds like it's too good to be true, quit being suspicious. Don't let that old paradigm go, I don't know, but girl, because I, I mean, you can't trust it. Stop that. You can, tr listen, <clears throat> stop saying that. Girl, you can't trust nobody. Because when you say that, you you're also including God. Stop that. Stop coming from a place, a paradigm of, of fear and trepidation, and, and, and just uh, scarcity, amen, and being fearful. He said, I did not give you a spirit of fear. I gave you one of power. So you don't have to worry about because wisdom is inside of the power. You don't have to say, do not fake and pretend like you're being wise when you're actually being scary. Ooh, wait, that was fire. Man, that was fire. Don't hide behind the cloak of wisdom when actually it's fear-based. Because God doesn't deal in fear. God doesn't deal in fear. He says, I did not give you a spirit of fear. I gave you one of power. You in control. Don't be so scared that people are going to dupe you and hurt you and uh, 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 bamboozle you. Glory. Quit being so scared of people. Hey, shine down and trust God. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct you. You don't have to be scared of man, what man can do to you. Just trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. That don't mean be stupid or be reckless, but it means exactly what it says. Trust in the Lord. Don't be suspicious. You are a faith person. You are an abundant person. You are an abundant spirit. You are a blessed spirit in Jesus' name. Listen, hallelujah, hallelujah. Release your mind from all of the inhibitions and fears and the limited thinking and go for it. Let March be the month of your miraculous. Let March be the month of your miracles, signs and wonders. Let March take your mind to a new level. Get in this thing. Stay in this word. <coughs> Excuse me. Stay in this word. Mm. Stay over here. And let the Holy Spirit take you to this abundant place. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this time. Thank you for these miracle signs and, and wonders. Thank you for this abundance. We don't have to live in lack and limitation and fear. Uh, your abundance. We have your mind and your mind teaches us how to love ourselves so we can love other people. This love thing will never go any further than we learn how to love ourselves. So take any limits and any wrong thinking off of us and expand our blessed minds. Expand our blessed minds in the name of Jesus so that we're possibility thinkers, knowing that all things are possible to them that believe. Cover us in the blood tonight in Jesus' name. Hey, buddies, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, just let him in. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. You are the son of God. Come into my heart. I believe you died of a virgin. I'm, I'm sorry, born of a virgin, died on a cross. There we go. Amen. It rose from the grave. Come into my heart. Listen, my love, if you just prayed that, you are born again. Welcome 
to the family of God. I love you. This is Dr. Regina, and I'm here to change your mind, make you believe better so you can live better. Have an amazing night. I love you. God bless you. Praise Jesus. Come on, give God a clap.